I'm Brian Werner from Charlottesville, Virginia, and today I'm going to demonstrate planning a VIP case that we will then use to demonstrate depth of ream instrumentation. First, I'd like to look at the patient's native inclination and native version. For this patient, they have one degree of inclination, eight degrees of native retroversion. That'll help me decide what implant I'm going to use. For this patient, I think it's very reasonable to use a standard MGS base plate. I typically will use a 24 millimeter base plate and prefer a screw when I use a standard MGS. Next, I like to size the glenosphere. And so I typically will choose the glenosphere on this axial view, making sure that it covers both anterior and posterior, at least flush anterior and posterior. And so this looks about a 36, and that seems to cover pretty well. The final thing I like to size before moving on to controls is the length of the screw or the post. Typically, that's going to be between a 25 and a 30 for me. Now we'll move on to implant controls. I like to start first looking at the axial. Typically, I'll leave the patients in a little bit of retroversion for several reasons, the first of which is because it does not affect clinical outcomes, the second of which is because a little bit of retroversion between seven and eight degrees of retroversion for most glenoids will allow the post or the screw to be completely contained in the vault. Then we'll typically look at the coronal plane. I like the glenosphere to be flush or a millimeter inferior, and so that can be adjusted right now on the coronal plane. I can also look at the 3D to confirm this, but if we look at this position here, we can see the line shows that we're flush or just inferior, and near the glenosphere is sitting flush or just inferior. We can also on this axial view adjust the anterior or posterior position of the base plate. I typically like to center it as best I can. It just seems pretty well centered. Finally then we can adjust our depth and we can move it lateral or medial until we get good backside seating. I'm shooting for close to 100% backside seating but I'm not necessarily committed to 100% backside seating. I often like to pair this with the max gap offset so that I'm balancing the amount of bone that I ream with the amount of backside seating that I can achieve. We would then proceed to using the screw trajectory feature to choose the length of our screws and the angle for our non-locking screws. This depth of reaming, this three to four millimeters of reaming that we'd be doing in this case will then be transferred to the final VIP plan provided to you as a surgeon with the letter that you can then transfer onto your uh, pilot reamer so that you match the depth of reaming in your VIP plan with what you achieve intraoperatively. So next I wanted to introduce you to the VIP glenoid reamer tray. It's a pretty simple tray. Just wanted to highlight a few things in the tray. First, we have our VIP pilot glenoid reamer. Next, we have the secondary reamers. Secondary reamers for the vault lock and also for MGS. And then the standard reaming equipment from the other trays that you're used to. I wanted to show you a little detail on the VIP pilot reamer. You'll see a series of letters on the pilot reamer, and this indicates the depth of ream from your VIP plan. This can be dialed to what your VIP plan calls for simply by turning the shaft and watching the line, which will correspond to the letter from your VIP plan. If you accidentally go too far or need to reset it, this is something where you can simply pull back and spin it and then restart again back at A. I will now demonstrate in a cadaver the use of the VIP glenoid reamer. We've done our standard exposure and capsule releases and have an excellent view of the glenoid. I will now place my guide pin for my standard MGS base plate using the VIP targeter as is typical. Our depth for the VIP pilot reamer is set at C per our VIP plan. Here I'm using the VIP pilot reamer to create our pilot ream hole. So next we will use our secondary MGS VIP reamer. You'll note the key difference between this VIP secondary reamer and the standard MGS reamer is the flat smooth hub. Next we'll use our secondary VIP reamer and this will ream until there's a positive stop. Now our reaming is complete. You can see that the pilot ream no longer shows, and so we can be very confident that we've now matched the depth of reaming from our VIP plan so that we can get the backside seating we were planning for our MGS implant. We would then proceed with our standard MGS implant technique of reaming for the central screw or post and placing the base plate. I'd now like to highlight for you the one key difference between using the VIP reaming system 
for a standard MGS and an augmented MGS. We're using a saw bones to demonstrate this. We've already placed our central pin and we'll use the same VIP pilot reamer in order to do our pilot ream. Here is the secondary VIP reamer for the augmented MGS. You'll note it has the elevated nose to provide a positive stop when it enters into the pilot hole. And again, this has a nice positive stop when you've completed your reaming. We have now completed our secondary VIP augmented MGS reaming. You'll notice a key difference from the standard MGS compared to the augmented MGS is that you'll still see some depth from the pilot ream. This is because of the nose sticking off of the augmented VIP MGS secondary reamer. This will be eliminated when you ream for your central post.